And that was the opening bell for the New York Stock Exchange, bringing in the business day to an open. Uh, let's talk about the European markets. Uh, they're mixed, while U.S. equity markets are hoping it will be the second straight week of gains. Stocks in Asia were mostly lower amidst a drop in Chinese technology shares and as investors evaluated economic risks from the Federal Reserve policy tightening and Russia's war in Ukraine. MSCI Inc. Asia Pacific's equity gauge fell for a second session, dragged lower by tumbling tech shares in Hong Kong. Oil also uh, steadied after European Union leaders refrained from fresh steps to cut imports of Russian crude. Time now to join Arise Business Analyst Bodeo Shosami as we see the opening in the U.S. stock markets. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Let's talk about geopolitics. Is it still all about the geopolitics? Well, I can see that Dow Jones is up 0.17%, which is a bit of a surprise given that uh, the market has been trying to tune out uh, Ukraine Russian crisis. Last week, we actually saw uh, the best performance for a while, but uh, many thought that was mainly an adjustment uh, for the overreaction that we had seen uh, weeks earlier. So it's interesting that we are seeing uh, the, the markets uh, looking uh, somewhat up uh, again. NASDAQ, however, is down 0.04%. Uh, S&P is, is up 0.14%. Dow Jones is up 0.18%. Uh, percent. Strange that Nasdaq uh, is, is um, much lower there, which of course suggests uh, there's some rotation probably also going on. But um, you are right. It's, it's more than just uh, geopolitics. We got weak German IFO survey uh, numbers uh, that just came in. And uh, if you look at those numbers, the IFO survey readings, uh, it saw the IFO business climate index slumping to 90.8 in March versus last month's 98.5. And uh, the consensus estimates of uh, 94.2 was also higher than what we, we, we had. The IFO expectations index, which indicates the, the projections for the next six months uh, in Germany, also worsened to 85.1. Uh, but the, the, the hodgepodge of uh, mostly geopolitics is still on as headlines uh, on Ukraine you, remains a very, very important uh, catalyst. European leaders continue to meet over the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Joe Biden called for Russia's removal from the G20. China does not quite agree. EU leaders, including Olaf Scholz and Mario Draghi, are rejecting Putin's plans to require payment for gas in rubles, asking uh, Moscow to honor payment. But Putin apparently is pu put, uh, pushing back. Um, we understand he has ordered Gazprom to accept payments only in, in rubles. So we'll see what happens. Biden also announced a deal to help Europe uh, replace Russian gas imports. One thing that's interesting going on on energy, energy markets, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, they say they want deeper security support from the Biden administration if the U.S. is expecting more cooperation from them on issues such as energy supply, Ukraine and the 250 nuclear accord uh, with Iran. Nothing goes uh, for, for nothing. But we'll see what happens at OPEC uh, meeting on the 31st of, of this month. Apart from the geopolitics, uh, the Fed officials are saying they are prepared to do whatever it takes to cool inflation down. Uh, that means interest rates hikes uh, as um, uh, quickly as possible. But looking again at um, how markets are doing, I can see that... Um, NASDAQ is now in positive territory, 1.93%. S&P is 1.43%. Is uh, Dow is 0 0.27. NASDAQ, as we speak, is now 0.00%. Uh, this is a rather volatile day. But um, I think the bottom line is that the markets uh, have a lot to digest. But my sense is trying to tune out uh, the geopolitics. Dow Jones is up 0.26%. Tune out the geopolitics is not going to be as easy as, uh, as, as that. Indeed, Bode. Could you tell us more about what's driving the prices? Well, I think that the prices are being driven, one, uh, by the negotiations that are going on in uh, Russia, Ukraine. Hopefully, there's an uh, expectation that there will be some kind of uh, reduction in the escalation 
or that Putin uh, would be uh, discouraged given the sanctions that he's, he's facing, even as these sanctions are becoming much, much more uh, aligned and we are expecting uh, more sanctions. The other thing is the macroeconomics is looking quite uh, unclear. Uh, we've just seen weaker numbers coming uh, from Europe, just like I said. We had retail sales uh, growth from the UK also looking a bit unclear. And um, the central banks are, of course, trying to move as quickly uh, with uh, the the um, hiking of rates as they possibly uh, can without causing a recession. So there's quite, uh, <laughs> quite I would say, a confluence of, of things, a slew of activities going on. And uh, that's why we're going to see a lot of volatility uh, in, in this uh, space. Well, but it will come to you in a minute, but we'll quickly take some more business stories. Europe's antitrust chief, Margaret Vestager, yesterday won back in from the European Union members and EU lawmakers for her proposal, the Digital Markets Act. The act is an attempt to rein in the powers of the tech giants via legislation for the first time. It is likely to be quickly mirrored in a number of countries, resulting in less flexibility for big tech as regulatory scrutiny gets tighter globally. In the UK, retail sales unexpectedly fell by 0.3% over the month in February compared to the growth of 0.6% expected and 1.9% in January of 2022. On an annualized basis, the UK retail sales rose by 7% in February versus 7.8% expected and a 9.4% last month, while the core retail sales increased by 4.6% in the reported month versus 5.6% expectations and 7.5% in the previous month. Apple is working on a subscription service for the iPhone and other hardware products, a move that could make device ownership similar to paying a monthly app fee. The service would be Apple's biggest push yet into automatically recurring sales, allowing users to subscribe to hardware for the first time rather than just digital services. The United States and European Union announced an agreement to try and boost the supply of liquefied natural gas to European countries by the end of 2022 with at least 15 billion cubic meters. The aim is to work with international partners to help the continent wean itself off Russian fuel imports. Under the agreement, EU member states will work to ensure demand for 50 billion cubic meters of U.S. liquefied natural gas until at least 2030. LNG imports from Russia stood at around 14 billion to 18 billion cubic meters annually in the past year. Arise business analyst Bodio Shosami is still here with us and we, is helping us answer some more of these questions we have. Okay, now speaking of the U.S. and their allies, uh, are they doing all that they can to impose uh, more sanctions? Well, they, they are trying to, but um, as we've been saying, it has been a bit difficult. Germany, Italy and France are making it clear that they can't have a sudden clamp down on Russian gas uh, exports because uh, that could risk triggering a, a recession. So a, a gradual diversifying of supplies is what we can expect. But there are other areas. For example, the EU is considering banning Russian shipping from its ports. And they're also favoring restricting road freight transport to and from uh, Russia and, and Belarus. Some are also saying that uh, it, it's possible to widen the range of banks affected by the decision to eject banks from the SWIFT uh, messaging network. Seven banks have been ejected so far. Some say more lenders uh, can be put in, in, that, um, uh, in, in, in that group. The other thing, of course, is that there is a tougher crackdown that is being proposed on Russia's ability to use crypto assets to circumvent uh, Western measures and um, the, the, the other big, big question is, when will it be right to begin to go after helpers of Russia in a more aggressive way that is extending sanctions beyond Russia to countries like India, China, that are seen to be indirectly or directly helping Russia to circumvent uh, measures. So there, there are quite a lot of things they could still uh, do. But um, like we know for sanctions, they have a way of having a multiplier effect. It will hit back also at some of these countries. And of course, a lot of the citizens, the innocent citizens, are also going to be hurt. 
Thanks for that, Bode. We also saw retail sales just out this morning as critics continue to hit at Sunak's spring statement. What are your thoughts on the data? Well, just like I said, the data was weak, down 0.3%, uh, according to the ONSS Office of National Statistics Deputy Director, Heather Borville. The drop was due to a decline in predominantly online trading. More consumers now going to restaurants, so there's less of retail food sales. And uh, household goods and buying from stores also reported a marked uh, decrease, even though clothing sales uh, did, did well. But my sense is that we are seeing cost of living escalating. Almost every household has received letters from the utilities warning that costs this year will be at least a 70 percent higher than last year so the appetite to spend on other things has been squeezed by these tighter budgets and affordability factors rishi sanak i think he, he did his best remember the old mantra used to be we didn't expect or plan for a pandemic now they're saying uh, we are now dealing with the war we're not ready for and the uk has the moral responsibility to support Ukraine, and that means bearing more, more costs. So although there is a windfall from the earlier months in the year, it's not clear whether that windfall would uh, continue. And of course, uh, they need more to be able to support uh, Ukraine. Already, the Office for Budget Responsibility has said GDP growth is now going to be 3.8% in 2022, which is lower than what was initially uh, planned. So the, the big challenge is that many of the factors like higher energy prices could actually linger for longer than expected, even as we don't know the trajectory or the full impact of this Russia-Ukraine crisis yet. So the £9 billion plan to help households pay increase in energy bills is a way of saying we can't spend all the fiscal windfall. And I think um, Rishi Sanaki is right there. Some were happy, of course. Uh, five pence a litre of oil duty caught VAT relief, increased threshold for national, national insurance payments, income tax reduction of 1p out of 20p, but not taxing the North Sea oil and gas windfalls um, is something that didn't go down very well, and promising lower corporate taxes through this uh, new planned uh, review of taxation uh, is still something that um, many are saying that the conservatives are really favoring the big companies uh, at the expense of, of, of uh, the, the common citizen, especially as this uh, NI, that's national insurance contribution is still increasing. But the pressure is still on and Rishi Sunak will certainly need to find more support levers uh, for his autumn speech. And Apple moving more aggressively with a subscription model. Is this going to catch on as the new trend? Well, I'm looking at Apple shares now. It's, it's uh, down 0.07, or I would say uh, just barely flat, 0 0.09, 0 0.10 in the red but my sense is it makes sense if you're an apple addict and you, you're an apple loyalist and you regularly stay in the apple system this is a cheaper way of uh, doing everything apple but if you are an occasional user um, you have to look at the cost benefits of course it depends on what the pricing of this subscription model is going to look like i think for apple maybe it may just be the last straw that moves them elsewhere but apple is very smart i think they are going to woo us in with a very low subscription price and after enough uh, product addiction to they will begin to raise the price levels uh, so we'll see what, what happens but it does make sense uh, instead of paying over a thousand pounds every other year for new hardware models that will become outdated. You have something much, much lower, which is bundled with so many other things that you may find uh, useful. But um, uh, like, I, like we've known, Apple is moving to more of a service company and less of a hardware company. So clearly they've seen this um, service bundling uh, approach uh, with subscriptions is, is definitely much more profitable for them, especially in the in the long term, uh, given that they have quite a huge, huge uh, loyal uh, client base. But the most important thing, like I said, is the pricing strategy. So we wait to, to see more on that. All right. We definitely will wait to see that. Thank you so much for joining the program this afternoon, Bodeo Shosamin.